Good day, everyone, and welcome back. It's my pleasure and honor to welcome John Ferguson, Senior Director of Solution Architecture at OutSystems, uh, for a discussion on digital transformation. Welcome, John. Great to have you with us. Thanks so much. Really excited to be here. Absolutely. Great. So first of all, just briefly tell us about yourself and your role and about OutSystems, and then we'll get to some of the substantive questions. Sure. Happy to. Uh, I like to think of myself as the professional uh, expense report approver for my team here at OutSystems, but more formally what I do is uh, I have a team of folks across the Americas who work with a lot of our customers to really understand how OutSystems fits into their digital transformation strategy. And we here at OutSystems, we're really focused on the idea of how do we empower our customers from the professional developer all the way up to this fabled citizen developer thing to really start building custom software because we think that's a key way that folks are gonna create great experiences for their end users and their internal associates. Wonderful, great explanation. So let's talk about digital transformation. <laughs> um, first of all, let's start, start at 40,000 feet or even 50,000 feet, very <laughs> high up in the air. Um, what is digital transformation? I, I can guarantee you that if I had a room of 10 individuals in our field and you went around and asked or, or had them write on a slip of paper, what is digital transformation? If you had 10 people, you'd get 20 answers so, uh, <laughs> or more. Um, so how do you define it? What, what does it look like to you? Yeah, sure. I'd even go as far as if you had 50, you might have 100 answers. I think it carries uh, through as the trend. So for us, digital transformation is how do we create a connection between what the business is trying to accomplish, the data and information that we have, and the experiences that people truly experience. And the way that we like to think about it is for many years, we thought about technology as being enterprise grade, resilient, scalable, all of these things. But really the expectations we all now have is about consumer grade. It's mobile, it's web, it's where we are. And digital transformation is about how do we bring everyone together to actually meet those expectations and really create those experiences. So that's how we think about it. That's great, thank you. Um, I want to get into some of the meat of this, but I also just want to note something that we all know, everyone has mobile devices now. <laughs> And what's interesting is, I think if you had asked this question, well, obviously, if you had asked it 10 years ago, the answers might have been different. But there are layers of complexity or cross hatching here. Mm. Don't, don't you agree that there's, there's more technology of different types? And so we have to think in a multi dimensional way. You know, we have to think about multi dimensional chess, multi level chess, right? Right, right. So one of the things, we have to talk about how systems can talk to each other or be roped in together, and also what the end user experiences, and also the idea of a seamless view. Mm -hmm. So why don't you knit those together in what I'm sure will be a brilliant way? <laughs> oh, gosh, the, the pressure is on. <laughs> so... You know, what we've kind of observed, and I've seen this in my career working with a large, you know, Fortune 500 organizations across different verticals, and they all suffer from some of the same challenges. You know, a few years ago, we said, let's bring all of our data together and we'll create this thing we call the data lake. Wonderful. And so everybody went off on these processes to try and figure out how do we actually bring the data to one place where we can rationalize it. However, that wasn't quite enough. And in fact, what we then needed to do is give access to that data through some type of a solution. And that's where we saw these types of things like microservice architectures and APIification of data. And that was fantastic, except it missed a really critical part, which was as a human, I can't quite make a call to some microservice somewhere. I have to use an application. I have to use some kind of software. And that really, I think, is the crux of it is we can bring all the data together, but until we create an experience where people can actually consume and take action upon that data, then we really haven't completed the full cycle. And I think that's what a lot of folks are really wrestling with is we have all these disparate systems, we've been trying to knit them together, but now we're finally having a focus to say, ah, the reason we're bringing it together 
is to accomplish a better patient outcome or a better experience for our clinicians, because that's really what's driving everything behind it. So what are, exactly, so what are some of the kind of drilling down to about 20,000 or 25,000? Sure. <laughs> what are some of the key obstacles in the way of creating that seamless view for end users that you just referenced? It's, it, it, it feels as though there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of stuff under the surface. Absolutely. Honestly, I, th I think the first critical thing that people are trying to solve for is that all of their information sits in silos. As uh, different organizations have adopted either a custom software or an off the shelf strategy, what we've done is we've built a lot of these different silos of information. And that really is like the prime obstacle to getting started is how do we rationalize and bring the data together in service of a particular outcome. And it's those silos that I think drive a lot of these challenges for our, our customers and these organizations. Yeah, I, I agree, absolutely. What are the most um, uh, innovative provider organizations doing now, hospitals, medical groups, and health systems? Sure. What we continue to see is trying to get to what a real single source of truth is for everybody. We see a lot of folks where um, it's almost as if they're looking at a Rubik's cube. We know it's a cube and we know it's made up of smaller cubes, but the colors are all different depending on which face you look at. And so strangely, the, the simplest thing is also the most effective and efficient thing. Creating portals for customers, for patients, for ecosystem people to consume, that is fed through the experience of the clinician, now we're all looking at that single source of truth. So from you know, the time someone schedules an appointment to the time they meet with a provider, to the time you go back and look at how your insurance is maybe interacted, it's a single journey as opposed to many discrete journeys. And the most innovative folks I think are really rationalizing that well. Okay, great, great. And I've heard your colleagues use the term wrapper, mm. uh, W-R-A-P-P-E-R, <laughs> by the way. Yes. I'm sure someone yes. does rap, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, can you tell us what the term means, how you use it, and how you apply it at OutSystems? Absolutely. And no one wants me rapping. It's a terrible experience for all. <laughs> um, but yeah, we use this term wrapper or, or commonly we'll say digital wrapper, which is we know we just can't replace systems. Uh, many of us have gone down the mainframe world. Let's replace the mainframe. Oh, well, it's pretty sticky. <laughs> and so while we can't replace those systems, we can modernize them and we can put them to purpose use. And in order to do that, what we see folks doing is creating these wrappers around these core systems so that we can really aggregate to that single source of truth and that single experience. And so to get even a little more tactical, it's when you're taking the core systems, the data that they make available, and actually bringing them up into a higher level where we can start to rationalize on them based upon an outcome we're trying to drive. Many okay. of these systems they really weren't built for an outcome. They were built to do a particular process. But now as we think about a better patient outcome or a clinician and their, the visit with them, we want to drive that experience. That allows us to drive a better wrapping around all of those specific core systems to drive that better experience. Okay. So I'm going to ask a very simple question because I'm sure. a simple guy. Uh, is that hard to do? You know, I think the hardest part is not the technology. It's actually about getting all of the people aligned around that because different teams and different groups within organizations have owned all of these core systems. Yes. Um, and in fact, I think this is now the job of IT leaders and IT executives is getting everybody to focus on a particular outcome so that they can say, oh, the way thing we're driving is this, the way we should be wrapping around our core systems is to get to this particular outcome. And that's the new role of IT leaders is really about bringing those teams together. Whereas before they were all kind of separated based upon their concerns. Right. Well, we all know that the way that healthcare IT evolved for decades in, in, in uh, provider organizations and patient care organizations was extremely haphazard. 
Um, you know, I, I refer to the healthcare system as the $3.6 trillion mom and pop store, right? <laughs> it's, it's very, you know, and as you know, and I know you know this, uh, you know, for many, many years, uh, let's say, let's talk about even pre-EHR, you know, individual departments would purchase information systems. Mm -hmm. And so in any mid-size, let's say 350 bed community hospital, and this is before the EHR, you would have a, you would have a hundred different departmental level systems. Then the EHR came along. Well, you, you had revenue cycle management or you had the finance system, but uh, the EHR came along and then that was supposedly knit together with all these other systems. <laughs> so it, it was just like the equivalent of a tangle of uh, electrical uh, um, connector cords, you know, behind your TV in the living room, right? And, and, and still is actually. <laughs> so what you and your colleagues are really doing is, to, is creating that level up where the systems can be better managed in order to create that better experience for end users. Am I correct? Absolutely. So the way that we think about it is that we can bring the data that exists across these core systems together create an engaging experience on top of it that hits that expectation of consumer grade, whether that's mobile or web or, you know, some of these newer mediums. Chatbots is a great example, right? We're leveraging AI and ML to try and figure out what are you really trying to get at and how can we help you so that humans can actually work on the really complex problems. Right. And that's a really interesting space. But yeah, it's how do we bring those things together and that's something that we as OutSystems are doing really well to knit all of that information together so that people can consume it in an actionable and informational way. Wonderful, wonderful. So one of the things that I think is, is exciting that you and your colleagues talk about is it's not about ripping and replacing existing systems because we've done enough of that, right? Right. Yeah. So, so let's talk about how we move forward around the ability to access complex information from all these different silos, including on handheld devices. Mm -hmm. what, what does this journey look like going from the present to hopefully the near-term future, not too far from now? Yeah, well, we, we always like to encourage people to think about the end in mind, or at least a, a fairly good stop along the journey, because I think as many of us who have been in IT and in many spaces for a while, it's never really ends, it's never really over. Um, but think about really what you're trying to accomplish. And if it's a technical goal of, we wanna increase our transactions or processing, go further. Um, we like to help people really think about what is the actual experience outcome that yeah. folks wanna have? And when you do that, it actually makes the rest of it a lot easier because then you can say, well, what's the data that we need to create that experience? Okay, great. Where does that live? Great. Now, how do we bring it together with tooling like OutSystems? Okay, great. Now, how do we bridge the gap to the end user with you know, kind of the sort of things that we as OutSystems help people create? So it, when you have that specific outcome in mind, that milestone that you're going after, it makes actually a lot of it far simpler because now you're you're doing it with intent as opposed to every single team trying to figure things out individually. Right. Uh, yeah, it's coordinated in right. a word. Yeah, <laughs> who, who knew? Who knew? <laughs> yeah, so good. And for for how how should how should CIOs and CTOs and health systems be thinking about? about that journey that you just just explained, um, what should they be thinking and doing right now? Sure. Um, know that it's a journey, that it never stops. Um, many times when we're talking with people, they say, great, we're gonna spin up a project. We're gonna take a very waterfall approach. That's fantastic. And it used to work when we couldn't move really quickly, especially from a development perspective. But now that we've empowered people to build software quickly, the business needs to come along on that journey. Yeah. And I think the responsibility of a CIO and a CTO is bridging that gap. You have these new capabilities in IT of building software faster. 
of bringing data together, awesome. Yes. But you need the intent and a, a strong executive who understands how to bridge the business back. And we've seen this show up actually really interesting where folks who have gone to school to become you know, doctors and clinicians move into IT. Gosh, they have a tremendously exciting experience because they understand both worlds. And that's the big piece of advice I offer to folks in that space is bridge that gap, understand what you're really trying to solve for and be okay that it's a journey because it might change. It might shift. You might need to do something different tomorrow than what you plan to do today. And that's yeah. okay. That's absolutely okay. Yeah. Somehow that feels very spiritual too, but <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of Zen to it. It will be you're right. <laughs> you're right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And do you, um, how do you feel about the next three to five years in the industry in the context of everything we've been talking about? Is it going to be rocky? Are people suddenly going to have revelations that will lead them to do, you know, find the easy button? Like what, what, what do you think, how will this evolve forward, especially for healthcare IT leaders like CIOs and CTOs? Yeah, I think we're at a super interesting moment in time, um, especially here in the US healthcare system. You know, as we think about value-based and outcome medicine, as we think about the, the way that the insurance space is shifting and changing, all of this can be empowered by technology. And we have to meet that challenge as part of the technology landscape. And so as we start to rationalize through what we need to do um, how we're going to accomplish it, who are the partners we need to bring on. And I think as a, a C-level executive in the CIO or CTO space, it's who are going to be the partners that come with us on this journey that are going to make it less rocky because it will be hard. Um, we're talking about institutionalization of things that go back 20, 30, maybe 50 years. Yeah. Um, but the, the opportunity in front of us to create amazing outcomes for our patients and amazing experiences for the clinicians and the ecosystem around them, that opportunity is here and it's now. And I think it's up to those kinds of folks to really take advantage of it. Yeah, absolutely. I also have to say, I think this discussion is extremely timely given all the business activity taking place in the provider space. Um, hospitals and health systems continue to grow through acquisition. Mm -hmm. They're acquiring facilities. They're also acquiring, uh, acquiring uh, physician groups and physician practices. And I, I think people are finally realizing you can't be constantly ripping and replacing. I mean, that would be, you, you could get to the point where that was all you were doing, right? right. Like nothing else. <laughs> and um, maybe just comment on that. The fact that this, this discussion and these issues, I, I feel like they're even more front and center than before given that we're in a period of great business activity too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so easy to fall into the, the painting of the Golden Gate Bridge problem where you've made it to the end and now you need to go back to the beginning and start over. <laughs> and, you know, as we think about replacing these core systems, that becomes such a huge endeavor. And it's a, we always call it high calorie type activities. It's really yeah. hard work. Um, yeah. That, well, then it, it sucks up so many resources, human and otherwise, right? I, I know I know of a couple of large multi-hospital systems where, my gosh, they spent years doing that. Right, exactly. So I think let's let's let those core systems do what they do best, which are some of these core pieces, whether it's EHR, whether it's scheduling and appointments, which, my gosh, what a great opportunity for disruption is just that piece. <laughs> Um, you know, there's a wonderful opportunity to let those systems do what they do well, yeah. bring that data together to instead focus on a particular outcome that we're driving, because wrapping up these things actually is going to yield a better result. And the, the interesting part is if you take some of the modernization techniques that we've seen in other industries of wrap up the core thing first, then you can start to modernize it. Um, that technique, I think, is making its way into healthcare IT because we don't want to throw these things out. They're serving a purpose. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and I think you and I both agree, we don't want to waste so much energy, right? You know, we could be hiring more and more and more implementational people just to keep ripping, replacing, and, 
adding, subtracting, and we just don't have time for that, you know? Yeah. It's, and I also think it limits the group of people that we can empower to help with the problem. Because yeah. if everything is a super low level IT centric thing, then the only people who can work on it are our low level IT centric folks with great expertise. Well, let's bring other folks into the equation because the problems we want to solve are actually at a different level. Um, yeah. And I think that's important. Absolutely. Wonderful. Any closing thoughts for, for the good of the order? <laughs> um, keep going. I know a lot of folks find that as they start to dig into the IT landscape in healthcare, that it's messy, it's complicated, um, but keep going because the opportunity is present now for us to really change the way that all of us participate in the healthcare system. And uh, don't stop, keep going. That's the one thing I would encourage people to keep in mind. That's, that's really great advice. I, I think that the next few years in this sphere are going to be absolutely critical because the demands um, on, I, on information systems and healthcare are only going to intensify over time. And as we move toward a finally truly patient and consumer centric system, we're going to have to make things easier for patients slash consumers for clinicians, for mm -hmm. everybody. So any organization like yours that's involved in making things easier for healthcare, <laughs> uh, bravo, because we, we, we all need to be in this together to make it a better experience for everyone. Couldn't agree more. And we feel the responsibility <laughs> of being a part of that, that change and that mind shift. But it's also really exciting to be at the center of a lot of it as we, we really make things consumable. And that's really important to our mission. Yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, John. It's been really great to speak with you today and uh, learn from your wisdom. And uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you so much for the time. And it's been a really great conversation. So looking forward to maybe chatting in the future. Absolutely. We'll have you back. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone in our audience for tuning in. Have a great day.